So last week I had a really cool opportunity to see something that's very uncommon for divers in Southern California. While making my way back to the boat, after doing a dive at Cat Rock at Anacap Island, I saw something suspended off in the water column in the distance, and as I swam closer and closer, I just I couldn't believe what I was seeing. This is a ratfish. Ratfish are also known as chimeras. They're members of the class Chondrichthys, and within that class you have two subclasses. You have the subclass Elasmobranchii, which include the sharks and rays, and then you have the subclass Hose folly, which includes the chimeras. Uh, these fish share many features of sharks. They have a cartilaginous skeleton. The males have claspers like sharks do, which are used in reproduction. They don't have swim bladders, but instead they maintain their neutral buoyancy with livers that are filled with this lighter, less dense than water oil like substance called squalene. But while they share many characteristics with sharks, there are also many differences uh, that are pretty unique in the fish world. One is that sharks and most other fish have upper and lower jaws that can protrude forward. You know how you can stick your lower jaw forward and then, well, most fish can do that with both their upper and lower jaws. These fish can't. Uh, the upper jaw is fused to the cranium like ours. Um, they also have uh, one ex external gill slit, which is covered by an operculum. These fish are egg-laying, and their eggs tend to come in some pretty crazy shapes as well. Another major difference is that ratfish don't have scales, which is why this guy looks so shiny. Also, you see that big spine on the dorsal fin? Well, that's a venomous spine, and it's used for defense. Venomous spines are, tend to be a pretty common defensive strategy among fish, actually. Uh, these fish typically live down deep, 500 meters or 1,600 feet or deeper. Um, the species and also a few others are known to appear shallower. I've heard that up north it's more common to see them in shallower waters, but that usually happens at night. To see one here at 20 feet in daylight was a very rare treat. One of the most fascinating things about these fish are their sensory capabilities. Um, they live down deep, so there's not a lot of light, so they have eyes that are very well adapted for low light vision. Uh, people who have seen them at night say that their eyes reflect green light back like a cat's eyes do. Uh, this is due to a reflective layer called the tapetum lucidum, uh, which reflects light back through the retina. It, basically what it does is it amplifies light, allowing for better night vision. Uh, they also have very excellent smell and taste capabilities, but little is really known about these capabilities. They're still studying that. It's very difficult to study these fish because they're so deep. Um, also, see those lines all along the fish, snout and particularly running down the length of its back? Well, that's called a lateral line. The lateral line is actually a canal uh, along the side of the fish with cells inside that are very sensitive to the movement of water around them. Most fish have a lateral line, and it's a way for the fish to know what's happening around around them, and it's also why it's so hard to catch a fish with your bare hands. You really can't sneak up on them. Chimeras also have an electroreceptive system, like sharks do, uh, called ampullae of Lorenzini, uh, which allows them to detect voltage gradients emitted by biotic and abiotic sources. So basically what this means is that these fish can actually feel the weak electric fields generated by living things. Uh, it's just another sense that allows them to find food. Uh, this also is used to help warn them of incoming predators and for finding mates. So anyway, uh, seeing a chimera was a very, very special experience for me. I've wanted to see one for many years now, and I'm just really glad I had my camera with me so I could share it with all of you. Thanks for watching.